Mike check two one two, bitch. Um yeah, Luka Doncic forty seven percent on seven pull up attempts per game, which is freaking incredible. Like that's literally superstar numbers. And then from three, his pull ups are three pull ups per game on thirty seven percent, which is again incredible. Like that's this blows his Euro League numbers out of the water. And now he's in the NBA, so it's like, how is this possible? And, like, I still don't know how this is possible. There's so many things that are going right, and yet so many things that are going wrong for this team at the same time. It's a really weird thing. Yeah. Um, for Dennis, he's made a uh, really good stride. Last year, he was really, really bad as a pull-up shooter. Like, he he shot, like, I think it was, like, in the high, it was in, like, the low 30s from pull-ups. But uh, this season he's doing much better, shooting uh, 40% on pull-ups on four-and-a-half attempts. So that's a really nice improvement. Yeah, definitely. Um, Catch-and-shoot shot for Dennis. This is where I was saying uh, – oh, yeah, that's, that's the wrong. 17-18, yeah. like Dennis shot only 36% on catch-and-shoot th- on catch and shoot attempts in total. Mm-hmm which is, uh, how should I put it, uh, very bad. Yeah, not not strong. <laughs> not strong at all. <laughs> and obviously now we know he's shooting you know, 70% on spot-ups, and you're like, what? Yeah, so he's like, he's leading in that category then, spot-up shooting. Yeah, which is probably not sustainable. Like there, I made that comment saying he's having a Lindell Wigging, Wigington type jump shooting year. Mm-hmm. Lindell Wigington is this guy in college who shot 70% from three for Iowa State last year, and now he has a whole bunch of draft type. But in my opinion, he's not really that good because he was just really hot. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, moving on to drives per game. A really nice thing to note here is Luca with 13 drives per game, is shooting 45%, which is decent. But a weird thing is he's really he's only shooting fifty eight percent free throw line uh, when he draws fouls off his drives. Yeah. Yet, and in general, he shoots like seventy six percent in comparison. So I feel like he needs to work on, I guess, recovering from making a, such a tough play, drawing a foul, and maybe getting knocked over, and then making the free throw. Whereas Dennis is actually really good at making those free throws when he draws those calls, but he draws it way less often. And whenever he shoots any other free throw, it's much, much worse results, which is kind of strange. Hmm. So. Foul, yeah, then, foul shooting uh, has been a little uneven for him. His percentage has crept up in the right direction. But, yeah, there, there are certainly scenarios like that where it, it's a it trend for sure where you're like, huh, doesn't usually complete the N1 for whatever reason. Yeah, it's like he's improved his uh, field three throw percentage by exactly one percent so yeah which is kind of disappointing i was hoping this meant three but it is what it is yeah luka Doncic on the elbow has made every single last shot he's taken from the elbow and on top of that he has six assists from the elbow so you're saying we need to run him on the elbow Yes. We Initiate the offense the at the elbow with Luca. I like it. Or even just get him to the elbow and then have him make a play, make a decision. Because Luka Doncic has a cerebral brain, and I trust him. Hmm. So I think we need to see some more of that. Now, negative news. I've been thinking this was a thing for a long time, but now it's definitely confirmed. Even though Weston Matthews sometimes guards the best player, this is still inexcusable. Wes Matthews is the worst, allowing the opponent 2.6% of their shots. What was that percentage again? 82.6%. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's a little more (laughs) eye-popping. For for context, Luca, who has a reputation of being a bad defender, yeah. Is only allowing seventy seven percent and even though he's occasionally at the matchup against LeBron and Paul George. But you know. So so within I, based on that, would you say in the context of like the stock report thing I mentioned, would you say he's trending downward then because of that, even though his uh shooting, particularly in recent games, has been up, do you think it's more canceling himself out a little bit? 
I think this I think is just what's been going on with West Matthews for a long time is that he's had this defensive reputation but hasn't really lived up to it outside of a few clutch moments where he's guarded Damian Lillard. Yeah. But in general he's he's his off ball defense is poor and he gets exposed for it a lot. Like I remember there was one game where like he got exposed on cuts like three or four times in a single game and I was like, Come on, man. You've been in the league for like six, seven years, eight years longer than that and you're yeah, still think, getting exposed by this yeah i think he's nine year vet now this is his ninth season i believe yeah and he's supposed to be this good defender and he just doesn't live up to that at all and it's really it's really frustrating because rick thinks he's still a good defender and he's not <laughs> yeah yeah no it, it is frustrating for sure uh let's see here guys don't forget uh to hit that like button if you don't mind I see that we got some real traction going here. This, this is awesome. Um, I'm really excited to see all the Mavs fans coming in now. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I am too. Yeah, I, I announced the game, the, the game. I announced the stream on... Streams on fire. Uh, maybe an hour ago. Not an hour ago, an hour and a half ago. So yeah. I think that might have helped a little, but I, was, I, was, I still Appreciate think you. it was beyond any of our... Yeah. And we are also um, live on Facebook next, on the Dallas Prospect Mavs Nation page and Dallas Sports oh, Fanatic yeah. as well. So we're we are everywhere. Sorry, go on with uh, your next stat. But old Facebook. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was going to say the the next stat. Um, I was going to talk about Luka Doncic's passing. Mm-hmm. I think the problem with Luka Doncic's passing is that. He makes a lot of good passes, but one, there's like at least a fifth of the time where the teammates aren't ready for it. And two, he's still getting baited by Hoff. He still gets like more offensive fouls than we would like, and he's still getting used to traveling, getting called a bit more on him since he's a rookie and all this. Yeah. So, like, you see these assisted turnovers, and they look disappointing for a guy of this uh, – high assist nature, but then you got to consider he's not really being used like that all the time. He's being relied on as pretty much the guy right now because he's the only guy that's been relatively consistent as to, in terms of a score, except for Wes Matthews and, you know, Wes Matthews. Right, right. So, Man. But, yeah, he yeah. has uh, 9.3 uh, potential assists compared to, uh, like, 4.2 turnovers, which is really disappointing. In yeah. terms of just pure numbers. And like his adjusted assists have fallen off, which is like uh whenever you create free throws from your from a would have been assist or it's like a secondary assist or a normal assist. But I think those numbers will start to recover if um he ever gets some more time with some players who can uh number one, be ready to catch his passes and to convert some more open shots consistently because we still are kind of unreliable with that. Yeah. I'm curious I'm curious to hear your thoughts on DeAndre Jordan specifically. I know before the stream went live, you and I were talking a little bit about that uh, and kind of his drop-off versus how he was projected for this season. Do, do you have that in front of you? I can. I, I, have a, I have the entire thing scrolling so I can find it. Okay. Let me know when you got that. So... Yep, I got it. DeAndre Jordan. Oh, oh, Senor DeAndre Jordan. It troubles me. He was expected to have a projection of 2.17 of uh, player impact plus minus, which is this stat that is like the all-in-one like impact stat. Yeah. And instead, he has an all-in-one player impact minus stat of 0.1. Ooh. Okay. For context, Luka Doncic's player impact plus minus with all his turnovers and rookie mistakes is point two. Hmm. Interesting. Despite the fact that DeAndre should be making an impact on defense, but guess what? He doesn't because he doesn't try. Yeah, that Utah game really... Uh, I think it was actually a journalist for the Jazz, or at least covers the Jazz, uh, had that great Twitter thread where he was like spotlighting all these different plays in that game where DeAndre is like not even getting a hand up to guard Donovan Mitchell on a pick and roll at the elbow, even though it's his man, uh, Gobert setting the screen. I mean, stuff like that's inexcusable. Like I, I understand 
that he's going to grab a bunch of rebounds and he's going to occasionally contest shots at the rim. But man, you, you've at least got to go. Sometimes it just seems like he's just kind of on autopilot out there and not not in a good way. Like those plays, not getting a hand up. Even Donovan Mitchell kind of looks at him going down the court like, really? You're not even going to put up a hand? <laughs> like that was the easiest shot I've had of the game. Never mind, this one is. Like it was it was bad for sure. Yeah, and it just feels like it's becoming more and more of reality. I was really disappointed by DeAndre in his first game, but then he had the T Wolves game where he actually tried and like he won over my trust and he has since lost. Yeah, that was his five block game, correct? Yes. And yeah. it was it was the one game where he actually really tried on defense the entire game and then now he's just like disappeared. Yeah. No, it, it is absolutely frustrating because when he's committed, he can be a difference maker. I just feel like because this team started rough, he's kind of not, I don't want to say checked out. There are moments where it's there, but it feels like he's just not built to be on a team that's not in the, like, in the top of the chase for the playoffs, you know? And I don't, I don't know if this team is going to be able to get into that race. I know a lot of the fan base is already wanting them to tank. I've been seeing even in the comments uh, discussion of you know Zion Williams and all that. Uh, Williamson. Uh. So that's I, I get it, but at the same time, they're not gonna like something has to go horrifically wrong for them to be in the running for that. I think because even though I don't think this is a playoff team, I don't see them being bad enough or giving up on this season to enough mm-hmm. of a degree to be in that top five of the pick uh, of the draft to keep their pick rather yeah i'm uh, you know me i've i've said you my messages and my yeah. takes yeah um here's the thing with that really is that my i i think i've had this take for ever since before the start of the season was the difference between the Mavs making and not making the playoffs is not going to be luka Doncic because luka Doncic is going to be good yeah the question was all for me was always is deandre jordan going to try is DeAndre Jordan going to do the things he did in 2016-17? And the answer is evidently no. Yeah. And since that answer is no, I like I was being saying my median projection was 40 wins. I was with DeAndre at least slightly trying, and now I'm slowly cratering back down to like praying we somehow hit 36 if I actually wanted us to win, but I don't anymore. So. Oh, okay. So a total <laughs> total change on your side then. Well, it's like well, unless we see a complete turnaround by like game twenty-five, if we have at least twelve wins by game twenty-five, we can talk about going yeah. for stuff. But yeah, that was I don't see before that the season. Like, I laid out the first twenty games were going to be tough for Dallas, and if they went something like six and fourteen, they were going to have to really evaluate what they wanted to do there. But we'll we'll see when we get to that point. Uh, we're twelve games in presently. They're sitting on what is their record? They're four and eight now. Yep. Yep. So let me see. I got that pulled up here as well. Uh, Yeah. Morning. Yep. I was trying to bring up my graphic with that laid out, but I clicked the wrong one first. Oh, here it is. That that was the problem. There we go. And it's got the roaring flames behind it, but, you know, it it feels dramatic because some fans. They're currently 13th out of 15 teams in the Western Conference. I know a lot of people are really worked up about that, but at the same time, technically they did just pass Minnesota. So, (laughs) I mean, they're they're moving up. It just takes some time. They got to get their first road win for sure, and they've got a tough stretch through the first 20. If they can keep working and building on what they've done in recent games, the Utah one was not a good game, but if they can keep doing that and building on it, maybe they can kind of creep into the discussion a little bit as far as teams really in the playoff chase, believably so. So let's see. I mean, as soon as we get into this little uh, stretch, you're cutting out a little bit. Two games and the Jazz will just eat our hearts out again. Yeah, yeah. I I mean, it's definitely something where, you got you got to win the games. Like if I don't think that this team's going to beat Utah right now, I, I don't. But you got to get those wins that you can get. Like you have to get Chicago, you have to get Brooklyn when that comes through. 
uh, other games that in that discussion that might be winnable as well that you need to look at. Obviously, not Golden State. Uh, man, I wish this scroller coming across the bottom was going just a little faster so I could project the next few games quickly. It's like Utah, Brooklyn, Chicago, Golden State, and there's one more in there I'm not thinking of off the top of my head. It might be another match with someone uh, that we've already played, but... I'm curious to see how they do. Um, let's see. Do you have another quick stat on this? I need to wrap up this segment and get any on the line. I know he's been waiting as well. You there, Max? Uh, like, oh, there you are. It's like it's like um, buffering a little with uh, phone audio. So yeah, yeah. I got you now. So, um, do you have like uh, any stat or any quick point or anything you want to make before we wrap up this segment? Yeah, I can feed some more stats, but I will want to say um, very, very briefly. For me, I'm not sure if we're a better team than the Brooklyn Nets right now, which is the the worst thing. Like um, D'Angelo Russell is very good. Karis Levert has gone off quite a few times. Spencer Dinwiddie is very good. We, Jared Allen actually plays defense. And we don't really have any of those things except for Luka Doncic is probably better than D'Angelo Russell, but I mean, still. Yeah. I, I'm really worried we lose the Nets. I, like, that was possible. really, it's really sad because I really thought we would beat them easily this year at the start of the year, but DeAndre is a big disappointment. Yeah, well, we'll see if they can turn it around a little bit, yeah. if they can get him engaged. That's part of what I said. If, if they can find a way to get some momentum going, maybe he starts being a little more engaged and in energetic defensively again. If that happens, then this team has a much higher ceiling. But big surprise, a lot of this team's potential and ability to win does hinge on the $22, 23000000 million player. <laughs> yep. But. So going back to that twenty-two, twenty-three million dollar player, mm-hmm. DeAndre Jordan projected value of twenty-one point six million dollars in wins added. Instead, DeAndre Jordan so far this season has added total value of three point six million dollars so That's far. Not- like. In terms of, like, I think that's, like, what it would be if it was extended out to, like, the entire season, which yeah. is really bad. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Let's just say. Okay. Um, another thing, I just want to talk about some players who I've been liking. Uh, yeah, I love Dorian right now. Dorian's been killing it. Mm-hmm. You know, he's improved his impact plus minus by point four from last year, and he's been shooting the lights out of the ball. Uh, Wesley Matthews, despite my absolute uh, ability to despise him, has made major improvements from last year to this year in the advanced statistics. He has improved from a negative three to a negative point four, which nice. is really good. Well, not really good. It's like a above average bench player, but compared to what last year was where he was just kind of, you know, he's making a much much bigger impact. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. But still, and whenever he's doing it the right way, it's lovely to watch. Like, um, what was the game where I said that Wes Matthews was, um, when Wes, when they, when Wes Matthews does what he's supposed to do, it's beautiful to watch. That was live tweeting. I think it was, I don't remember what game it was was off the top of my head, but, yeah, I think it was the win on Tuesday. Gotcha. Um, against that would have been. It would have been the, the Wizards. Wizards. Yeah, Wizards. Yeah that that was that was the first time this year. It was like Wes Matthews is doing the right stuff. I'm very happy about it. Yeah, there's no there's no doubt when he's playing within his role that it, the team works better. And I think they I think part of it's just a feeling out process. That's why I'm still hopeful this team can still maybe get more competitive and start putting up some more wins, but we just have to see it's a, it's a team that its stars are young. It'll be interesting to check out, but uh, that's the time I got for this segment here. Max, thank you for coming on. Appreciate all the stats and insight and you do a great job uh, sending me all kinds of extra stats and uh, tweets and things like that, that give extra context or storylines for me to discuss on the show makes it easier on me for sure. You guys, if you ever want to do that as well, 
feel free to send me stuff on at Dallas Prospect or at DDP underscore journalist. I guess it helps if I throw that up there on the screen. But yeah, if, uh, if you guys want, send, send me info if there's something you want me to see. And uh, I can definitely set it up for the show itself and obviously give you guys credit for bringing it to my attention. Uh, Max, tell them where they can find you. Um, on Twitter at Rangers King six, six, nine, um, obviously on the Dallas prospect.com, mm-hmm. but, um, I have a, I already announced this on a stream before, but now I just wanted to like make it even more official. Yeah. Work will soon, soon, soon be coming out on lock draft for my draft content. I have the big 12 all prospect team on the way and also the big 10 all prospect team on the way as well. Nice. And in terms of, upcoming work for the site um i'm going to be working on some of the g league scouting for a uh, costas ray spalding and uh daryl macon probably start working on that over uh, christmas break whenever don't have uh, the mad rush of scouting during thanksgiving okay. and i can get some stuff done for that and then yeah you'll see some lovely work about that because i I'm actually kind of a fan of Daryl Macon, and I really want to see him succeed. I think he needs to take on the nickname of uh, Crispy, because he's Crispy Crispy hot. Macon Bacon. Yes. I dig it. Macon is lots of bacon. <laughs> All right. Nice. All right, Max, thanks again for coming on. Uh, we will definitely have you on again.